on behalf of the governing board and all the members of the North American Catholicist Society, I would like to welcome you to Pittsburgh and to this 24th edition of the North American meeting. Um, we're hosted uh, during this week by the Pittsburgh Cleveland Catholicist Society. And on behalf of all of us, I would like to thank the organizing committee and its members for being so, so gracious and attentive uh, hosts. Um, so we gather together every two years or so. And you know, in doing that, uh, we do um, a very good job of sharing our science. We get to meet again and reconnect with old friends. And I think we all leave, I can say, in, in my case, with many new friends. I'd like to extend a particularly welcome, particular welcome to those of you who are here for the first time, okay? And especially for those of you graduate students that are beginning to enter the Catholicist community and will be with us longer than anybody else in, in this group today. Um, there, there is, however, a, a significant um, challenge that you all have ahead of you that the organizers of this meeting or those of us in the governing board cannot help you with. And that is that ultimately, except for a few of the operational details, the success of this meeting will depend on you and in what you do in your technical exchange and how you interact and how you network. And as a result of it, I, I leave you this morning with my best wishes for success in making this meeting your success. At this point, I would like to bring to the podium John Armour, who will introduce the award plenary speaker. Good morning. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Ann Gaffney today for her Hoodry Award lecture. Ann now joins an impressive list of world-class catalytic scientists and engineers. I cannot possibly do justice to her long list of significant accomplishments in my allotted two minutes, so allow me to highlight only a few of those. Anne has spent most of her more than 30 years in catalysis working in multiple industrial laboratories as well as serving as an executive in R&D. Currently, she has a new position as laboratory fellow and division director at the Idaho National Laboratory. She has a long record of invention, development, and publication of innovative chemical processes, which supports her recognition with the Eugene Hoodry Award for 2015. Anne has maintained a strong individual and collaborative technical focus, during which she has published more than 32 peer-reviewed journal articles, over 60 conference proceedings or articles, authored and edited numerous book chapters, presented over 95 seminars and an inventor or co-inventor of over 150 U.S. patents. Anne has served the catalysis community in multiple ways as the Philadelphia Club representative for the, to the NACS for many years, the co-chair of the last World Ox Congress on Oxidation Catalysis, and the 19th NAM meeting chair. Recognition of her contributions to catalysis has previously been acknowledged by the ACS Award in Industrial Chemistry, the ACS Award for Affordable Green Chemistry, the ACS Distinguished Service Award of the Petroleum Division, the ACS Petroleum Chemistry Award, and the Philadelphia Catalysis Club Award. And the podium is yours with my personal congratulations. Thank you very much, John, and it's certainly a pleasure to be here and an honor to accept this grand award. So today, I'll be focusing in on selective oxidation catalysis. Uh, that's primarily where I spent most of my industrial career. And when I graduated from Delaware in 1981, a long time ago, I joined Atlantic Richfield and um, Arco Chemical Company. And at that time, a big 
project of theirs was taking remote gas and converting it to a transportable fuel. And during that time, we also discovered new catalysts for doing oxidative dehydrogenation. So you'll be hearing quite a bit about that today. And also at ARCO, spent quite a bit of time looking at direct epoxidation of propylene to propylene oxide. And um, as John mentioned, I worked at many different companies. I then moved on to DuPont when they owned Conoco and worked on partial oxidation of methane to syngas and then continued on to Roman Haas, now called Dow, or owned by Dow, and looked at propane to acrylic acid. Um, oops. Okay, so our first investigation was back in 1981, and at that time I discovered that lanthanide oxide, rare earth oxides, with promoters were very good for doing oxidative dehydrogenation. And even today, you can find quite a bit of literature um, on this chemistry. And currently, I, am, I joined Idaho National Labs in November 2014, and we're heading up a, an advanced manufacturing uh, center, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. So what people might ask, well, why, why worry about selective oxidative dehydrogenation? Well, the uh, number one chemical today as a basic building block monomer is ethylene, and it's produced by uh, exo uh, endothermic process. And if we could make this uh, very selectively, oxidatively, there would be actually an energy exporting transformation. And on achieving high selectivity, uh, one would achieve reduced greenhouse emission. And as you'll see, we were able to actually simplify the technology, have fewer byproducts, basically on the order of 2 to 3 percent CO and CO2, and only PPM level of oxygenates. This made the separation much easier. And there are operational, uh, fewer operational steps and more economically viable. So looking at the uh, national trends, nearly 30% of the energy consumed is in the manufacturing sector and quite a bit in the uh, chemical sector, about 6.0 quads per year. So if we could tackle this problem, it would be very uh, conducive to our national energy savings. And if you look at the direct correlation between how much energy, uh, primary energy consumed versus a CO2 emission. It's uh, fairly linear and the chemicals are roughly about 22% of that industrial sector. So here at INL, uh, we're beginning to revisit ethylene. We're also looking at many other different chemistries, um, but I'll talk about this one today. So we're building up our staff right now. Uh, I recently joined, uh, we are hiring uh, uh, recently a TAP expert, Dr. Rebecca Fushimi, beginning a TAP uh, laboratory and looking for chemical and chemical engineers, uh, chemists, on a, a, basically a recruit, a recruiting right now. Uh, just this month, we started the Center for Interface Reaction and Catalyst Engineering, CRC, and we're supporting our research with laboratory uh, directed research and development, and also reaching out to uh, DOE offices and the Office of Science. So what, what is our strategy? We want to have an impact on the chemical transformations that will be most impactful and we believe we can save up to 40% of in that process. We're in the beginning stages of forming an industrial consortium. And next year we anticipate starting up a manufacturing development facility. So today the technical part of the talk will um, go over the feedstock, uh, logistics, catalyst development, the uh, kinetic synthesis, proof of concept, and our path forward. So the reaction looks fairly simple, um, but the trick is really to keep it selective, and that's controlled by the catalyst properties. 
and uh, we'll hear about that today. Um, our operating temperatures are below 400 degrees C, so it's fairly low. We're not seeing any background conversion without the catalyst. And in this case, we do have uh, PPM levels of oxygen in the effluent. The uh, potentials are you can achieve very high selectivity, energy savings, simplified downstream processing versus crackers. And um, we believe it, it can be used and demonstrated in a recycle loop.